Welcome back. I don't know if audio is working. It is. It huh. Wow. What are the odds? Not not good. <laughs> <laughs> not great. Our track record. How about the has game not audio? Been fantastic. There it is. Look at nice. it. See the tiny little bars? They're yeah. so small. Actually, they're kind of big. Hold on. Let me dial that back a little bit. I don't want to overpower people with game audio. <clears throat> All right. What were we doing? Um, we, were done we the defeated desert? the desert, sadly. Did we get? Did we beat all the levels? I guess we got everything in the desert. I think so. I think we won 100% of the desert, and we did the little special level in the desert. I'm just wondering why we're just randomly <clears throat> out on the overworld. Like, if we just walk back to the Maybe overworld. you should talk to that guy who goes, <laughs> Oh, we went to Special World. That's what I said. Right. Okay, I wasn't listening. Sorry. I said we went to the Special World in the desert. Okay. It's interesting <clears throat> that the desert's up there, but this is also a desert. All right, so we took, we already beat these. That oh, looks like grass. Look at me. It's got the lawn is mowed and everything. Yellow grass. Mm-hmm. Grass isn't usually yellow. Well. Sand isn't usually mowed. Well, I mean, you could come through there with a rake and, you know, do this, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> check, out, check, <clears throat> check out this walk animation here. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. That's how I walk. I, I walk mm -hmm. sideways, usually. Yeah. <laughs> it's like doing a half crab. Oh, the fungus mines. Sweet. Nice. I've always wanted to go to the fungus mines. All right, bro. I'm going to give you a history lesson on Gamergate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I've heard the term Gamergate. <clears throat> I probably know what it is, but I just can't put the two things together in my mind. So. Mm -hmm. Well, Gamergate is stupid. I was not there for it. I mean, it happened while I was around, mm -hmm. obviously, because it was in, like, 2012 or something. Yeah. But I wasn't paying attention. I had no clue what was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard somebody talk about it one time, one of my friends, and I was like, what is a Gamergate? Yeah. And then they didn't explain it to me, so then oh. I just ignored it for like five more years. And then eventually I finally did encounter uh, information about Gamergate, which told me what I needed to know. Uh-huh. So basically, the gist of Gamergate was that there was this thing going on where these indie game developers had this click going on and indie games if you recall were really popular like it was a big deal that indie games were taking off in like 2010 2011 2012 right. it was like indie games were like taking over the entire world that's when that's the time frame that you got your braids and you got your fez right and you got your other shit that i can't think of right now mm -hmm. there was tons of indie games coming out <clears throat> and it was a whole big thing yeah ps3 was a uh was the era where you could download a lot of indie games yeah. on the PSN. Mm -hmm. yeah. So basically what was happening is these, it turns out a lot of these indie game developers are all like friends with each other, mm -hmm. which is fine. Obviously you can be friends with whoever you want. Right. And it makes sense that these people who would be in these indie game spaces off in California somewhere would probably end up hobnobbing with one another and becoming friends, right? Yeah. But one of the problems that started cropping up <clears throat> was that they were also, turns out, friends with all the game journalists. Oh, yeah. And then okay. they were also fucking all the game journalists. <laughs> oh, okay. And, you know, lots of, lots of uh, you know, questionable arrangements were coming up that were coming to light. Right. And basically, there were some high-profile indie game developers who were trading sex for reviews. <laughs> wow. Uh, with various different people at different game journalism websites, right, right? Right. And when all this information came to light, uh, a lot of people were kind of pissed about it, uh -huh. right? A lot of people on Twitter, basically. A lot of people on Twitter were like, this is bullshit. Uh, we want games to be reviewed fairly. Right. This, this, kind of, this is the kind of shit that you wouldn't allow in any other industry, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. And so... Uh, the the response from gamers okay uh was not well received by the media and so basically all of the game journalism websites hunkered down uh and uh 
hunkered down and and basically went into uh, like damage control. We're gonna we're gonna cover ourselves right. kind of mode. And they re- started writing all these disparaging articles about gamers. Oh, gamers are toxic. They're evil. They're they're misogynists. So right. they're doing harassment campaigns. And basically, um, they ended up there. These different there's a bunch of different things were running at the same time. But there were situations where uh, some of these indie game people uh, like basically shut down uh, an event. By like doing a mass DDoSing of a, of the events web servers and stuff, which shut down this non you know kind of like gamer gate people aligned game jam event. Mm-hmm. There was a bunch of shenanigans going on. Okay, okay. It's, it's just a bunch of bullshit basically. Right. But <clears throat> a bunch of really bad behavior. Okay. Right. And the game journalism sphere was one hundred percent in lockstep that. The game journalists and the game developers are fine, and the gamers are evil, right? Mm -hmm. And then the mainstream kind of media eventually picked up on this, and of course sided with the game journalism side of things, Mm -hmm. which caused uh, basically people on mainstream news to report on harassment that's happening. Gamers are harassing journalists, and this is... This is the end of our democracy. <laughs> right. I mean, it's the same kind of, you know, no, they weren't saying yeah. it's the end of our democracy, but it's the same kind of, uh, you know, thing. It's like, oh, people expressing their opinions is the end of democracy. Right, right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that's basically how Gamergate played out, is uh, pretty much all of the, the kind of powers that be that were being called out for their bad behavior. Um basically uh in lockstep defended themselves and they were all the mainstream powers right gotcha yeah and essentially gamergate ended with a massive loss on the part of of the people who just wanted to play some games right right gamer game gamergate was a loss for regular people and it was a big win for all of these you know progressive weirdos that were all part of this bad behavior that was being uh that was being criticized in the first place because the mainstream narrative basically sided with them and as a result a ton of those people who were in gamergate one this is how gamergate two comes about that we're in right now yeah a ton of these people who are you know weirdo progressive freaks right right they're a bunch of trans there's a bunch of trans trans weirdos in this yeah. you know there's a bunch of like you know uh, just all kinds of, of progressive weirdos right but there are a bunch of trans weirdos in there too yeah. and um which to be 100 percent clear to youtube i don't have a problem with trans people okay right there are tons of freaks out there okay <laughs> who are really pushing an ideology that i disagree with yeah. okay and yep. I, that's who I got a problem with, okay? Sure. I understand. So, you know, some people got problems. Uh-huh. They got mental problems, and this is how they deal with it. <laughs> right. Uh, that's fine. I Like, I'm not mad at them for, for dealing that way. I don't want to take them seriously, but, right. but you know, whatever. Uh, the point is that a bunch of the people that were involved in the bad behavior in Gamergate 1 ended up... Uh, getting high-ranking positions in all of these major AAA game studios, and the way that they did it is by basically threatening these companies that if they don't comply with hiring all of their woke writers that are from Gamergate, <laughs> uh-huh. that they will uh, that it will be really bad for them. The media is going to say horrible things about your company if uh-huh. you don't. Uh, and they had the they had the receipts because they had Gamergate, so they yeah. could point to. They could point to what happened during Gamergate, and they could say, hey, Electronic Arts, hey, Sony, hey, whoever, you need to hire all of us progressive weirdos to ruin your games uh-huh. and and destroy your writing right. so that uh, we can get our ideology all up in your games. And, as yeah. a, and, and what you get out of the deal is that we won't blackmail you. <laughs> can't, can't those guys or those companies just say... No, and here, you know, now I have you on record saying that you would do that. No, because they're all pussies, Jeremy. 
all of the executives in all of these places are pussies. Wow. But these, Jeremy, these people, these people. So the the big the company that is the biggest um, that is in the has the spotlight the most right now is this company called Sweet Baby Inc. Uh-huh. And Sweet Baby Inc. is constructed of like some arch Gamergate people, okay? Yeah. And their whole deal is they're in a narrative consulting company, and what they do is they, uh, is they, uh, basically go around and they say this. They have the the CEO of this company has said this in a presentation at a game developers con- conference that what they do is they go around and they tell these companies. Hey, you need to be more inclusive. You need to be more diverse. Uh-huh. Because if you're not, then people, consumers, are going to see that you are a bigoted company and that you need and that you're bad. Okay? And they're going to make a stink on social media mm-hmm. and that is going to cost you tons of money. The problem and is- she says this CEO said in a, in one of these conferences that she was speaking to game developers. It was a game development conference. She said, "Go to your uh, go to your management." And if your management's not interested in hiring us, go to your marketing team and mm-hmm. tell them about all the horrible things that are going to happen to them, the marketing team, mm-hmm. whenever everybody finds out that your company is bigoted. Yeah. And uh, see, and she's like, you'll be surprised what the marketing team will freak out about uh-huh. that the executives may not care about. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's going to turn out you're going to have the budget to hire us and company <laughs> and companies <laughs> like us. Wow. And it's just a bunch of bullshit. And so the way that the Gamergate 2 kicked off mm-hmm. was that um, you recall a couple of weeks ago or months ago. I don't know. I can't remember how long it's been since we streamed last. Mm-hmm. We were talking about Suicide Squad killed yeah, the yeah, Justice yeah. League. Okay. Well, at that time, we didn't know. The, at the time that I explained that to you, uh, we didn't know all the details right. about it. But somebody discovered that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League had a writing credit from a company that nobody knew of called Sweet Baby Inc. Okay? And uh, it was like, oh, what's that? That's kind of a weird sounding... uh, Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Uh, How how many Goombas have we defeated total in the entire (laughs) game? No. I guess. I'd say one in the hundreds, right? Shit, this is so tough. 108 to 110? That's bullshit. I'm going to go 79. I'm going to say 79. Oh, Wrong. Fuck. Damn. How are you supposed to know this? How many coins does that you want uh, in this game? Is it 100 Always. in this game? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those. <laughs> it was 100. Oh, it's Prince Florian, right? Are you serious? Like, one question is absolutely impossible, and the rest of these are just uh-huh. baby mode? What the hell? Yeah. Oh, fuck, I don't know. Mm. Uh, Dude, this is bullshit, okay? Just go in the middle. Go. Nice. Oh. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, anyway, what I was saying was people go digging through the credits and they find this writing credit from Sweet Baby Inc. And they go, oh, that sounds like a kind of a fucked up sounding company. Sweet Mm -hmm. Baby Inc., what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Right. (laughs) A little weird sounding to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so they go go looking into Sweet Baby Inc. They're like, what is a Sweet Baby Inc., right? Yeah. And they find, oh, Sweet Baby Inc. worked on this other game, Mm -hmm. uh, Spider-Man 2. Uh, oh, I remember Spider-Man 2. Spider-Man 2 was the one where they got rid of Peter Parker at the end of the game and said, uh, Peter said, Miles, you're better at spider Manning than me, and now you're the Spider-Man now. It's interesting that you correlated those two things in that same conversation that we had. Well, we didn't... Yeah, it is, because it was a com- it's commonly being talked about. Like, Spider-Man yeah. was really commonly being talked about as woke garbage, where the first game was great, but this second right. game has been ruined for some inexplicable reason. Nobody knows why. Right. And then you've got Suicide Squad that is inexplicably, inexplicably horrible after some of the best Batman games, you yeah. know, and one of the most beloved franchises there right. is. And uh, so, yeah, but the... Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, dude, change I, bet, badges if what, you want. What, what is that's the, one that we got. In what a, does it do? It helps oh. you found, find Wonder Flower. Why do I care about that? Uh, what was the one that we were using that was cool? Grappling uh, Vine. 
Yeah, that was that was. Damn it! I think probably the one. You Did I not? Oh, I hit the B button. Stupid, mm. stupid Nintendo, <laughs> with your B button. <laughs> ow, ow. Yeah. So you you related when we had that conversation. You related. <laughs> Fucking hell. You related uh, Suicide Squad to Spider Man Two. Yeah. Because we were talking about Suicide Squad, and you were like, you were like, it's like Spider Man Two, uh -huh. what they did with that. And come to find out, there's a there's a real good reason. For yeah. That. So, there's wow, a okay. hard link there. And okay. then, um, so how deep does the rabbit hole go now? So like they started three? looking into yeah. all of the catalog of games, and it turns out, oh, uh, Sweet Baby Ink was involved in. Uh, the most recent Assassin's Creed game that has a bunch of woke bullshit in it. And Sweet Baby Ink was involved in the most recent God of War game that had some woke bullshit in it. Although God of War was spared to some degree. You already got the, the oh. seed, right? Damn it, I oh. did. But now we get to answer questions again. Nice. Oh boy. Um, is it the same? Mm -mm. Run, race. Uh, race, yeah. Um, how would you walk, rock, paper, scissor with a wiggler? <laughs> Tennis match? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Um, what flower takes me in the sky? It's well, it's a propeller, propeller flower, thing. right? Hell yeah! Um, uh, Master Poplin's trial. Uh, what? What? what I don't even remember what that is. Fluff puff peaks. Okay. Um, I don't nope, remember it's that. shiny balls. Okay. <laughs> um. It yeah, there was a series of levels we had to do to it that remember that one well, that I mean, had I the can, fake I ending? Can drill into ceilings, right? Remember yeah, the yeah. sliding one that had the fake ending? I do remember the sliding one. Uh, that that uh, that's one of the trials. Cool. That was the last trial, I think. Okay. Sorry about that waste of time. I uh, didn't realize that I was triggering that uh, yeah. I wasn't really you know. Okay, really so anyway, I, I want to know more about so God of Sweet War, baby gaming. God of War, Rad, Ragnarok was not ruined uh, by wokeness, but it definitely was damaged, right? Yeah. But they had enough of uh, uh, their <laughs> own, you know, writing staff actually still caring about the game storyline right. <laughs> to prevent it from getting ruined. Um, but uh, they did do the classic uh, t putting a black character into a game that's set in, like, Norse yeah, mythology Norway. world. Okay, yeah, yeah that, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Why wouldn't there be a black person in Norway? <laughs> um, oh, that's cheese. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, yeah, and then uh, there are... A bunch of other games. A bunch of indie games, which is, you know, <laughs> understandable that indie games would be, uh, would fall under this, yeah. uh, would fall prey to this sort of, uh, progressive crap because there's no, uh, standards whatsoever when it comes to indie <laughs> games. Uh, but, uh, I can't think of, I can't think right off the top of my head of, many more games than that because I'm not really I don't really care about most of the games that they worked on yeah but there is a laundry list of games that they worked wow. on so uh, they're that being are exposed, all that are all garbage they were all yeah. bad oh um god there's there's got there's one I'm thinking there was one that I should know Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. If I think of it, I, I'll think of it. But I think there was another major one that I should know, but I can't think of what it is right now. The point is that, yes, uh, at, if you go back through the catalog of games that were surprisingly bad, like unexpectedly bad, because they either are sequels to good games or, um, you know, or they're from studios that are typically reliable, mm -hmm. um, but they end up being crap, uh, it turns out Sweet Baby worked on a lot of those games. Wow. And then, um, then comes out. There's news that actually, so Sweet Baby Inc. is f actually funded by another company called Baby Ghost Inc. or whatever. <laughs> I think okay. that's what it's called, Baby Ghost. And it turns out that's that company is run by some other GamerGate people. Uh -huh. And then uh, they also are 
they're they're founded by uh, some people who are from another company called uh, lo- what is it called Light Lightstream or something like that. Mm-hmm. That is yet another GamerGate, uh, you know, indie dev based company that are, is full of people from the GamerGate time period uh-huh. who were who were you know doing bad acting bad actors during that time period yeah so this there's just just this deeply interconnected web and all of these other companies are the same kind of company as sweet baby inc wow. they're a narrative development company that goes in and basically blackmails these companies to yeah. hire them and then they force their garbage into the games and then the games end up being ass <laughs> yeah so this is just like a massive web of bullshit right that is happening and it's all coming clear it's all coming clean right now and and guess and you wouldn't you wouldn't get you would never guess you'd never guess Jeremy what is what's happening now that all of this is being exposed would you imagine that those people who behave badly all that time are uh, who who you know um, did their smear campaigns and who did their uh, false reporting of people trying to get people banned off of websites and all that sort of stuff those people would you believe that they're being perfect angels and they're actually well behaved and they're not doing anything bad yeah would you believe that would i, not, I mean no you would be a fool to believe that jeremy they're all doing the same exact shit that they were doing before well, yeah, obviously. all of those people they're trying to get people banned off of various different um off of various different platforms there's a guy who created a Steam curator page that curates games that are made by, that had these people working on them. So that whenever you go, if you follow that page, if you go look at a game on Steam, the curator, the curators that you follow, it'll show what their recommendation or not recommendation is. Yeah. So if you go follow this, this one page, it will say not recommended on all these games that these companies worked on, right? Right. Well... These people that worked at these companies have been relentlessly trying to get this guy banned off of Steam and get his account banned uh-huh. because he's because they say it's targeted harassment. Uh-huh. But the page is literally just a page that says recommend or not recommend on games. <laughs> like it says, oh yeah, yeah, a Sweet Baby Inc. worked on this game. I do not recommend it. Yeah, that's the entire thing. This is not targeted harassment. No. But there but the thing is that the these people playing the victim is what they do. Yeah. It's their whole grift. Their right. entire business is built on playing the victim. So, yeah. It's the same shit new year. Yeah. And this is why it's Gamergate 2. <clears throat> well, but they're they they've been exposed at this point. They're being exposed. Uh-huh. And hopefully their awareness is is being raised. Well, there is a small problem. Mm -hmm. they're not the only ones yeah a lot of the people who are causing who are shoving their ideology into these games are people who work at the studios Mm -hmm. because over the years as this problem has grown uh with all this garbage this narrative development company garbage that has also coincided with a lot of the old the old people in the industry getting ousted yeah from their positions People getting ousted from their positions or leaving willingly because they're tired of the bullshit that they're dealing with. Yeah. Because basically, um, oh, Saints Row, Saints Row. You, I, I'm, I'm sure you haven't played Saints Row, but I'm sure no, you're familiar, I'm familiar with, with it. it. Saints Row used to be like a raunchy, you know, violent, right. ridiculous game, right? They released a new Saints Row that is totally like just woke bullshit. Like you play, oh, wow. as, your options are to play as like a gay. Non binary, <laughs> uh, like black woman, or a, or like a, you know, lesbian, uh, lesbian, like d- d- purple haired white woman, uh-huh. or like a, or the only like man you can play as is like a, a, a gay, like a shrimpy gay black man or something. <laughs> it's just like, and the whole thing has just garbage millennial tier writing in it wait oh no no i don't i didn't want that (laughs) okay cool it's just cringe the whole thing is cringe right right and the saints row games used to be funny like they were never my cup of tea but uh but i get it they were funny in the kind of super over the top (laughs) raunchy yeah 
uh, Hangover, the Hangover movie style. Oh, really? Comedy, I, you know? I didn't know that. Um, well, that's funny. The first Saints Row game was actually a serious, like, trying thought, to be GTA. Yeah, I thought But it then was after that, that was not really very successful because only GTA can be GTA. Right. They pivoted to just being, like, a comedy game, basically. Um, <laughs> we got a musical. But anyway. So that game, that new Saints Row game was, like, absolute dog shit. But uh, there's a channel that you might have heard of, uh, Short Fat Otaku. Uh huh. He did a rev he did an interview with some with one of the developers on that game. Yeah. And the dude the the interview uh, the guy he interviewed basically explained that the way that this has worked out at least in the company that made Saints Row, and we imagine that the tactics are probably pretty similar in other companies as well, is it basically these narrative development companies get brought on and the writers that actually work for the company mm -hmm. are pretty much told that they have to defer to the narrative development company. So if the narrative development company says you need to change your your white male character into a black lesbian uh, character you have to do it. There's no no pushback will be heard it just seems by like management. A, like um, it seems like um bullying that you're agreeing to. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like, oh yeah, it's a cool game, bro. Um, change change this about it though. It'll be fun. It'll be funny. Well, it's a situation where management has been convinced of these companies that it's too dangerous to not just oh. accept this, right? Right. And do what they want because they're afraid that it'll lead to a big. Whoops! What did I do? I think you went to the sun baked desert. Well, I do love it here. <laughs> Where the fuck are we? Where's Fungi Forest? Uh, oh, Eleanor. Or, yeah, Eleanor. Oh. There you go. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, yeah. All these execs... Well, you know how execs are in companies. They're, they're spineless. Mm -hmm. As soon as they think that something might get them a lawsuit or some bad press or whatever, they're gonna right. just go for it, okay? So yeah, but you're basically right. Yeah, it's bullying that you uh, that you just uh, that, opt into, right? <laughs> um, and you pay for it actually. Yeah, yeah. It's like you pay to get bullied. Uh huh. It's kind of like a fetish, I think. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, but that sort of thing is is driving like the good talent that used to be in these companies away from them because they don't want. I mean, if you were a writer working at a studio that has put out like absolute bangers you know that everybody loves games that people adore what am what am i what have i done here oh, oh cool invisible light. um do you want to be told by management that yeah oh uh, you're going to defer to this other company no. that sucks by the way right no. they're going to tell you how to write your game and you can just fuck off basically um I don't blame anybody from leaving that for leaving those companies, but yeah. it's funny if you go through and look at like the the perfect example is um, the perfect example is the Suicide Squad. Mm -hmm. If you go through and look at the writing credits for that game, um, none of the people that used to work at Rocksteady for the previous Batman games are there anymore. Yeah. They're all gone. All of the writers on on the Arkham games are not are not present anymore. Yeah. And it's because they've all been basically run out of the company yeah. by all of these bad policy decisions. And it's made it impossible for them to do their job. Yeah. So they just leave. And that's happening all across the industry. So even, even if a company doesn't um, hire Sweet Baby Inc., the damage may already be done. All the talent may be gone. Right. They may have uh, not just left the company; they may have left the industry. Right. Some of these people might, some of like these writers that used to work in games, might just say, "Fuck games, I'm out of here." Right. I'm not going to work in games anymore. This industry sucks. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so it's a it's it's a shitty situation for anybody who likes <coughs> you know Western games at right. least. If you want to play a Western game and get a decent experience, it's looking pretty bleak. I yeah. should have saved one of those Koopas. For it's. You know, for me, it doesn't affect me because I don't play AAA 
Western games. Well, you might. Like I mean, you liked uh, you 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 liked Hitman. Oh sure. You know that's a that's a Western AAA game. You might encounter another Western AAA game that you just want to play at some yeah. point. Well, here's the thing about Hitman. I've got enough Hitman. You know, I've got the I've got the trilogy collection, and if they come out with a woke Hitman, I'm I'm just not gonna play it. Yeah. Well, you know what? It would really kill me, which. It didn't happen yet because they actually ended up canceling the entire thing because anyway they were supposed to be working on a new Deus Ex game mm. which is like one of my favorite series of all time yeah um, uh, but that got canceled but I could just it's so easy to imagine some woke company coming in yeah. and ruining Deus Ex and it would kill me yeah because Deus Ex is some oh, it's, it's one of my favorite game series period it's just like it's amazing yeah I love these games and the thing that makes it so likely that these games would get that, that Deus Ex will get fucked up by one of these companies is that it is Deus Ex does tackle like see, like philosophical concepts mm -hmm. it's like it's got something to say Deus Ex has something to say right. or it doesn't it does. It has something to say, but actually, more than that, it has something to ask. It's asking you questions mm -hmm. for you to think about, right? Right. And that is the absolute perfect kind of thing mm -hmm. for those types of people to ruin, <laughs> because right. they're gonna say, you know what? I don't like this part where we ask the player qu tough questions and make them ponder things. I think we just tell the player what, what they should think. think. Yeah. Yeah. That is exactly the kind of bullshit that would happen. Yeah. And uh, I'm not here for it. No. Uh, it would uh, it ruin it. <clears throat> well. But thankfully, I guess. I mean, not thankfully, because I wanted another Deus Ex game. But the one that was being worked on got canceled. Yeah. Because thankfully. the company that, that is making it is uh, got bought by a company. the Eidos Montreal, the company that makes the Deus Ex games. Yeah got bought out by a, a big like uh capital firm like a uh, investment firm basically that mm -hmm. buys video game companies but they're basically like a holding company that yeah. buys video game developers uh and they were talking a big game about uh oh this is gonna we're gonna resurrect old franchises and we're gonna give everything it's it's due that you've been wanting you know right. And then uh, they ended up basically axing a bunch of these studios that they bought. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, canceling all these game projects that were supposed to be happening. Oh, shit. Uh, and it is a real bummer. It's a bummer, but it's also potentially probably good, especially mm -hmm. in the current climate. I think it would be, might be better that we wait and... Damn it. <laughs> uh that we wait until maybe some of this bullshit dies down yeah for these games to get started up again yeah uh yeah. well the fact that the spotlight is on them now is a good thing though yeah i, I hope so oh look you know there's a there's a large section of the gamer population that's still pretty based, and I think getting oh, more yeah, so yeah, every yeah. day. No, the gamers and... are on it, but the problem is, like we've seen with Hollywood, dude. Like everybody fucking hates Hollywood movies, but they're still shit. It's we we we've, we've been dealing they're... with like these shit movies for like the past like yeah, almost ten years now, now, and like, they're all failing. You have like like Disney coming out and kind of saying hey we fucked up the Marvel we fucked up Marvel stuff we, yeah but gonna they're not gonna but they're now. not actually gonna do it though yeah. cause they still keep on releasing dumb bullshit I they, don't know how you're supposed to get the the top of that flagpole oh, I don't know. there's something to do with those those pipes but I didn't see any they, solution there they have kind of admitted that the MCU was a failure and that that they, uh, yeah, but all their upcoming projects, they're not changing course on. Yeah. They're still going to be shit. Yeah. Look. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they lose billions of dollars every year. And it's just not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> and they're not looking to solve it, but... Man, I don't know. I feel like we are headed for a tonal shift in the United States where, where the woke... Uh, 
jokesters are going to be on the fringe, and they're going to be more based people. More, well, more and more people are going to get more and more based over the next several years. I feel it coming. I see it happening, and I'm happy. I'm 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 happy about it. I hope so. I do. I hope so. I'm hopeful that that will happen. I truly I, believe it. I, I I see it. I I see it happening. I I I really see it coming. I have some skepticism. I'm worried that the and the entrenched people, the entrenched powers that are making this stuff happen, are going to find a way to just keep on doing it. Mm. I mean, what and avoid consequences somehow. It it all has to do with the with the public though, and if the public is not having it anymore, eventually they have to stop, yeah. or they go out of business. I mean, that's it. <laughs> right. You can't keep making things that nobody buys and can continue to remain in business. Well, Disney specifically has an advantage. Because they have the they have the <coughs> parks and merch. Well, I mean, they um, have their old merch, but mm-hmm. nobody's buying the new merch. No, but they people still buy the old stuff. Yeah, they do, and they still go to the parks. Yeah. So Disney has like these extra revenue sources that can kind of subsidize. Well, what is a percentage, as a percentage of their overall revenue, what is the parks? What is the? I know merch is big, but. What is the parks when it comes to the parks to like, are fucking huge, bro. I know they're big, but like no, compared like to percentage their wise major of their theatri- revenue, theatrical releases the parks and stuff? are like a massive percentage of their really? revenue. I think it's like thirty percent of their revenue as a company. This or is more. really cool and disgusting at the same time because mm-hmm. it looks like you're swimming through snot. Mm-hmm. But like the the concept of having a water level where you can just sit. <laughs> well, you're inside of a Jello jiggler yeah. right there. That's really cool. I like it. Imagine if when mom made Jello Jigglers, we swam in them. She made like, dude, why didn't we ever make a giant oh. Jello Jiggler in the swimming pool? That's what I was saying. <laughs> That's what I was trying gonna get at. It's like imagine instead of making a little tray of Jello Jigglers, uh-huh. she made like a yeah, sw- like a swimming pool. Dude, size. that. And then you just has, jump in. Somebody has done that. Dude, can you imagine the belly flops? Yeah. <laughs> oh man, the pain. But not not standard Jello. Like it's got to be Jello Jigglers mm-hmm. consistency, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is very different. Uh huh. Yeah, that would be awesome, dude. Uh huh. Why did we? Why mom was a fun mom, right? She would have done. I don't something. know if mom was that fun. <laughs> she would have done something like that. <laughs> no, mom was, was a little OCD fun. too. So uh-huh. <laughs> the idea of having to clean out Jello from the swimming pool probably. Well, the other problem is that Jello needs to be cold to yeah. harden up. Well, uh, true. So if it was it out there in the like sun, in the, it would have had to have been fall time. Well, yeah, it'd have been tricky. Okay, yeah, it'd been tricky to make it happen because it needs to be warm to dissolve, but then it needs to be cold to harden. Right. right? So it'd have been it'd have been a challenge. I love the uh, surface tension like physics here, mm-hmm. where like you know you shoot at the Jello and the and the the fireballs don't go through mm. but if you're in the jello the fireballs do go through yeah doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense but it it's doesn't cool. but it, i think from a gameplay perspective <clears throat> it makes sense. and also that you can swim in it or you can stand on it mm-hmm. which is cool oh maybe it's um maybe it's um oobleck, oobleck yeah. yeah maybe it's non-newtonian <clears throat> yeah see you don't, you don't even have to like you can swim fast, but you can also just, like, move yourself around with the joystick. Mm. I don't know. Hey, you know what? If if, if, if somebody was going to put a, a fun spin on a uh, on a water level concept, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> it's more fun than water, for sure. Yeah. I liked the water levels in Mario Galaxy, where the gravity and water were interplayed with one another. If you can combine water with mechanics, yeah, right. I'm trying to remember how that was, what that was like. Um, I'm glad those aren't insta kills like the thwomps or whatever it is when they stop on. Oh wait, no, 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 not Mario Galaxy. Um, Super Mario 3D World. That's the one that has the the water levels that have Again, like. I can't remember what you're talking about yeah there's some water levels where there's like a gravity so it's like it's like a side scrolling section Mm -hmm. where there's like a gravity element to it where 
if you jump into one area of the room, the gravity is going up. But if you fall, if you jump to another area, it goes down. So you're switching gravity as you're hitting these little puddles of water. Yeah. You don't remember this level? I'm. Uh, y- uh, so there's like Same. arrows. There's like sections this. of the level that are colored one way, and they have oh, arrows yeah, pointing yeah, one yeah. way, and then you have arrows pointing the other way. I didn't get anything. You there. got nothing. I got no- this is another this one, is of those... one of those fake out levels. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. We well, got faked. Good job on your nothing, bro. <laughs> yeah. I kind of like those levels where mm-hmm. you feel like you're making progress, but you actually you didn't make any. If you go up, yeah, I didn't, oh, no. <clears throat> All right. Well, yeah, so that's Gamergate 2. I think that well, puts, a, puts a pin in that conversation, I feel. Yeah, like. I, I like hearing about leftists taking L's, and I kind of feel like... Anytime they get exposed for their dumb bullshit, that's a that's an L. Yeah, it's just uh, it's sad that so many great games have to suffer yeah. now. And and you know, the thing about games is they take a long time to make. Yeah, like games, a lot of games these days are in a production pipeline for you know four or five years. So games that are in production right now are already ruined. Yeah, <laughs> like even though they're exposed. They can be fixed, though. If, if uh, enough... Look, depending on how far in you are, I don't know if they can be fixed. Like, well, if, if there's a had... game coming out next year, it's probably too late to go back to oh, rework the script. If you had, you know, uh, a male lead character, you know, a straight male lead character, and they say, you know, put a put a chick in it, make her lame and gay, uh-huh. you can just as easily say, well, put the dude back in there and make him cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I don't know. Oh yeah, that's a good point. The the uh, South Park made their thing about uh-huh. it. So if South Park is on it, you know that it's like become yeah within the realm of what can be talked about right by you know normal normal right. everyday society. It's always a it's always a uh, it's always a big win for us when Trey and Matt get it, get involved in an issue. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, even though I don't watch South Park. Yeah. The I mean I don't I don't like have anything against South Park I just don't watch it I don't watch it either but I have watched episodes of it and mm-hmm. it's funny and they whenever they whenever they go after a topic you know that that has entered the realm yeah. of it's something that should be talked about right. because they don't they basically go after stuff that's funny to criticize because it's something real that's happening that needs to be criticized right. and they go over the top with it a lot of the times but. It's a good sign whenever mm-hmm. they're when they're talking about something, right. and they're not conservative by any means. No, they, not at they, all. They, but but they're what's big cool, time liberals, what, but they're not. I they're love not about, weirdos, though. I love I love about uh, about them, and I love you know about any that you can be a base liberal. Damn it! Yeah, <laughs> and I'm all for it. I love I hey, love. Look, I, I don't have any problem with base liberal liberals. Yeah. They're they're totally cool with me. Yeah. And I'm I'm uh, I'm all for them. They're on our side. We're all together. We're all mm-hmm. in this together. You know. We may not agree on the gay marriage or the guns or whatever, right. but we're not enemies, though. Right. We just have a we just have a, a gentlemanly I mean, the, disagreement. There are you know depending on the liberal you're talking to, there there are very gun friendly liberals, and there there are some, but it's 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 you know they're a rare commodity. Yeah. Come on, let me ground pound while I'm in the <laughs> the oobleck. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, you didn't get that that one that yeah. one block. Well, ah oh, man, and I love this one too. <laughs> this is my this is one of my favorite wonders. <laughs> I love little Jello Mario. He's he's fun to play as. Uh huh. Hey, this uh this ah oh, damn it this stage overall to me is a banger. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> I'm impatient, Jeremy. There nice. we go. No time limit, so you're you're fine. Um. Uh. Uh. 
<laughs> Some creepy ass flowers right here. Leave me alone, flowers. I, oh shit. <laughs> Can you move differently in the? Move? Yeah, you move really smoothly. Yeah. You got kind of a speed speed move going on here. I would take a whole. Oh wow, you latched to the outside of the goo. Nice. I think we talked about this last time, but I would take a whole game of Jello Mario. Yeah. <laughs> this is fun. It is pretty good. I like Jello Mario. Aw, oh, damn it! <laughs> I love how you just disintegrated. <laughs> damn it! Alright. Where was I? Where 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 was Jello? Where was Jello Mario at? Oh, that block right there. Mm -hmm. I bet you can get it. I bet you can just jump up and get it. Or no, that's that's a bad idea. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> See, I got it. Easy. All right. <laughs> Ooh, you start out big again. Yep, that's, that's nice. nice. Good job, game. Thank you for holding my hand here, game. Right. <laughs> I am a baby, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Luckily, Nintendo is not affected by this, all right. this bullshit, but, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah the know. localization team's not uh, affected by this bullshit? Uh, some of them are, yes. Mm. That's bad. Bit of a problem there. Yeah. Um, oh, I guess we didn't talk about it, but there was the whole thing with uh, the Final Fantasy Rebirth. Um, Tifa's boobs. Tifa's boobs being back, you know, yeah. which they were they were fine in remake, but mm -hmm. man, Rebirth really, really yeah, yeah. took it up a notch. Okay. Um, but uh, then there was also some censorship that was done as well really uh in an unrelated thing so they did this thing which i think is so stupid because doing it admits to like you know the you know whenever you have not done something wrong but you're you're convinced that you should feel bad about it and by being damn it same spot damn it that was not even it was just it was just not even okay so you know how the whole concept of like apologizing for something that you don't really believe you did wrong, mm -hmm. but in doing that, in apologizing for it, you have admitted Instead guilt. Of, yeah. You've admitted guilt for something you weren't actually guilty of just right. by apologizing. So you shouldn't have done it. Yeah. Like apologizing opens you up to the criticism now. Right. Well, so there's a section in Final Fantasy VII that happens whenever uh, Tifa is 15, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a sequence in um, whatchamacallit. I mean, I, I know what happens forget. in the game, so if you know the sequence... Are you talking about in, in, in Nibelheim? In Nibelheim, yeah. So, uh, so in this sequence, uh, Tifa has like this cute cowboy girl, cowgirl yeah. outfit, right? I remember that. And in Final Fantasy Remake, they had that portion in there um, with her with that cute, cute cowgirl uh, outfit, right? Mm -hmm. And she was really cute in it. Well... What they did is, after all this Rebirth stuff came out, they did, like, this definitive edition of Final Fantasy VII Remake uh -huh. to go with it that had, like, some extra content and whatnot. Yeah. But in the process of doing that, they made some changes here and there. Okay. And one of the changes they made is they added an extra undershirt to Tifa on her, in her cowboy outfit uh -huh. to hide a little tiny bit of cleavage that was visible in the cowgirl outfit. And in doing that... They admitted guilt for something they weren't guilty of because all it was because was she a was cute. Is that because that? she was fifteen, they they basically said, "Oh, we did a pedophilia by having a fifteen-year-old girl in a in a top that reveals a tiny bit of cleavage." And I'm like, okay. "Dude, no, you didn't actually do anything wrong because it wasn't a problem until you did something until about you, it. Yeah. Doing the thing, nobody like, was taking anybody action. outraged at this. No, no one was outraged about it, but somebody somewhere oh, wow. got nervous about it." Uh -huh. And in doing so, admitted guilt to something that they were not guilty of. Because yeah. the thing is, 
that that outfit i saw those pictures that outfit is a perfectly reasonable outfit that you would expect to find a real 15 year old girl and you know what fuck this game here you go <laughs> a real 15 year old game a girl out in the real world wearing yeah it was not indecent it was not inappropriate it was a cute outfit right and I don't really give a fuck, to be honest with you, about that game. Because I everything I know about Remake is that it's that it's just garbage. It's just mm-hmm. Tetsuya Nomura doing dumb bullshit yeah. with Final Fantasy VII. So I'm not interested in playing it. But, but I do... do you have to be interested in playing it to play Rebirth? Because I am kind of interested in Rebirth. Well, but I don't... Like, I have Remake. I could play it, but I don't... I think there's the dumb no more bullshit going on in there that modifies how the story plays out so i think you probably do need to know what's going yeah. on in remake to know what's well, going on i was on wondering rebirth. if they like if rebirth was an exact like a direct sequel to what happened in remake or if they were kind of going in a different direction with it i think it is a, a sequel yeah they just don't want to call it remake part two so they called it rebirth right i'm just hearing good things about that as opposed to the bad things i heard about remake so. oh well i don't know i don't know much about it my point is that this was a horrible move to make because there was nothing wrong with Tifa's t- Tifa. Tifa, I listen too much. Sitch and Adam. Sitch, oh, all, for some reason, Tifa. Sitch calls her Tifa because back in the day, I used to call her Tifa. Because <laughs> back in the day, we didn't have translations yeah. for these games, so you read the text. Right. And like there was no voice acting, so you read the text and you just thought what you thought, right? Right. So anyway. There was nothing wrong with Tifa's outfit. It was a cute outfit. And now the outfit kind of looks like ass. Because uh-huh. <laughs> the undershirt doesn't look like it goes there. Yeah. And the whole thing is just stupid. Because it shouldn't have even <laughs> been a thing in the first place. Right. If they I know never... what you were doing wrong, by the way. What? You weren't running. You weren't holding the run. Oh, run. maybe so. That, that you go twice as fast. And it's really easy to dodge those guys. So, so no one cared about this until they did it. And once they did it, and the people were like, oh, man, this is stupid. Why did they do that? Right. Um, no. Dude, you get to play. You, okay. You got oh, both of those a... Wonder Seeds, but you were halfway through the yeah. level, so... And I had already played that level. Mm-hmm. So. Wait. Why did we get the second seed? Because we completed the level, the success, the correct route. Oh, it's a different route. Okay. You actually, when you did it, you actually went a completely different route. I see. Because there was okay. like a vertical route that you went that got you straight to the end. Okay. And that didn't count. Gotcha. So basically what ended up happening is everybody started complaining. Everybody who started complaining about the change to her costume, mm-hmm. all the responses to that was, uh, she's a 15-year-old girl. Uh-huh. Uh, you're a pedophile. So everybody who is complaining that the costume was ruined by this change for no reason is being cast as a pedophile because they because Tifa's a fifteen year old girl in this scene. What are you are you lusting after a fifteen year old girl? Wow. And we're and everybody else everybody online who's complaining about this is like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. No, she had a cute costume. We thought it was cute. Now it's not. Yeah. And this is unnecessary censorship. Right. It doesn't even make sense from the perspective of censoring things. Right. Somebody clutched their pearls a little too hard, a little too close to the well, sun. <laughs> what's what's pretty, what's weird about it to me though is that they, they went from, they they they, like why why correct one thing, and mess up another? I don't understand. I don't like, know. Uh, uh, whatever okay <laughs> i don't know well it's you know what though well because probably because the the team that worked on final fantasy 7 rebirth and the team that worked on this patch and update for final fantasy 7 remake are probably not the same team yeah. and there's probably some some busybody in that team that worked on the patch for remake that was like um this is problematic yeah Tifa's outfit is problematic. She's a 15-year-old girl. Oh, yeah. 15-year-old girls can't show any cleavage at all, ever. <laughs> yeah. It's not physically possible. <laughs> <laughs> Look. It's not Dude, like that... you can grab the flagpole with the gla- grapple hook. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's not like that's a sexy outfit. It was. Right. It's, it's goofy looking and cute. Yeah. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Also, it's a video game. Yeah. So it's not none of it's even real anyway. 
So yeah, we don't know. We don't know what the status of Squeenix is. What's What's weird though is like again, it's a Japanese game, and Japan doesn't seem to really have a problem with that. So, well, the was thing it, that was it an American. Well, that's the thing though. A lot of these Japanese companies are starting to concern themselves with what Americans think a yeah. lot more than they used to, right. which is bad. I think. I think that's bad. Mm-hmm. You know, America's right about a lot of things. You know. We're, we're, we're pretty good about a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. but we got this contingent of people who are just fucking insane. Well, I and mean, the I Japanese think that, I think that I don't know the difference. believe that the, the underage, underage sexuality is definitely a thing that we have going right, you know. Sure, but the Japanese don't know the difference between good American values and bad ones. They yeah. just see that America is a big market for them, and right. that whenever a bunch of Americans are pissed off about something, maybe they should think about it. Yeah. And this is a big thing that happened with... Uh, it's funny. This the, the, So many things are lining up right now. Resident Evil 5 came out back in... I don't know. 2008, 2009 or something. And it was a big... There was a big hubbub about Resident Evil 5 being racist. Because in Resident Evil 5, it takes place in Africa. Uh-huh. And in Africa, the... the uh, I forget what the company's called. It's not the Umbrella Corporation. It's a different company. But... Mm-hmm. Um, they have gotten a hold of this strain of the Las Plagas virus from from uh, Resident Evil 4, mm-hmm. and they've infected this African like country with okay. it as part of their experiments in being evil, because that's what Resident Evil... I don't know right. if you know anything about Resident Evil, but basically what the, the thing is that the companies that are in Resident Evil that are causing the viruses uh-huh. to be outbroke, to e- outbreak and stuff, evil. they are evil. That's like their business. Okay. Like their business... Like, there's no... <laughs> There's no nuance to it at all. Yeah. Like, their business model is being evil. I don't know. <clears throat> Freaking Toadette block <laughs> knocked me into, <laughs> into the lava. Nice. Thanks a lot, you know, <laughs> hidden surprise coin there. That was that was a Kaizo. That was designed to be a Kaizo block uh-huh. purposefully by Nintendo. Thanks a lot, asshole. All right, anyway. So Wesker, there's this fellow named Wesker. He's the greatest thing ever in in any. He's the greatest villain in any video game. Okay, uh-huh. Albert Wesker is like top tier villain. Okay, uh-huh. because he's just completely, he's just utterly evil, uh-huh. and he his whole thing is that like he he like he just so he just are, is evil. <laughs> like, are Resident Evil games like really campy? And I'm goofy? going to. Chris, I'm going to destroy. The, I'm going to d- d- do complete. There's going to be complete global saturation. Yeah. I'm going to destroy the entire world. Chris. <laughs> really? It's what I want to is do. Is that? Is that? So is it? I, I always thought of Resident Evil games as like a more serious tone. No, they, not at all. Though? They're super goofy. Really? They're, oh yeah, okay. Resident Evil are totally camp games. Okay. okay. All right. Didn't know. They're super but campy. I kind of want to play them. Now. Oh, they're great. They're super campy. But anyway, so Resident Evil Five takes place in Africa. Wesker has gotten the Las Plagas vi- virus, and uh-huh. a new version, a new strain of it, and he's unleashed it on Africa because he's evil. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, well, no, they're trying to uh, re-engineer the virus to turn you... It's not a virus, it's a parasite. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Las Plagas is a, is a para- <clears throat> parasite. Yeah. Anyway, the point is, they're trying to engineer like an ultimate version of the Las Plagas uh, parasite Man, I missed the that makes Wonder you season. into a superhuman, right? Okay. Oh. So instead of... Um, instead of, uh, you know, causing you to turn into some sort of zombie monster you know, creature with worms and teeth yeah, yeah. and stuff coming out of your neck oh, and whatnot. Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. You're actually a superhuman, right? No. Yeah, 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 hang on. Okay. Oh, I thought I was going to lose it. All right. Okay, so it makes you a superhuman. Well, no, that's the that's their objective is to is to like modify and you know adjust you know change the change around the the genetics of the parasite, right? So that they can create a version of it that doesn't that turns you just into a superhuman, right? Right. That doesn't have all the bad ill effects of turning you into a monstrous zombie creature, right? Right. Um. So they, as part of their testing protocol, they, you know, they re- release it all over in throughout this African country, and then you, as Chris Redfield, uh-huh. red-blooded American man, Chris Redfield, you go uh, 
and and kill all of the black people, okay? Oh, okay. And it was a big, it was a huge stink. It blew up like crazy at, at the time that Resident Evil 5 is super racist because you, a white guy, go uh-huh. and kill exclusively black people. Uh-huh. It's like a black person killing simulator, wow. right? But yeah. actually, you know, that's not really, that's not really a, a clear... Uh, accurate <laughs> assessment of the situation uh-huh. because you are going in here to uh, stop this plague from being unleashed and because of it taking place in Africa of course all the people that are there are going to be Africans and right you're, you're saving Africa right you're helping to save Africa? yes <laughs> isn't that the point yes but the optics Jeremy the uh-huh. optics are really bad because you're white and you they're know, black I, will, I what if what if nothing ever was problematic uh uh-huh. What, what would well, it was like if there yeah. wasn't something that was pro- what, that everything wasn't problematic. Well, nothing actually is really problematic. That's a that's a fake term yeah, that's been no, created. I'm just, uh, I'm just saying, like, what would life be like if we could just go through life? I mean, it would just be like without normal, things right? being problematic. Things would be like normal. Yeah, like they uh, always have it's been up until just now. It's never the drill. But this might be the time. See, look at all the <laughs> drilling that I can do. Look, it's amazing. Uh, oh, oh, it's, oh, it's, a uh, lot. it's these uh, switch things. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Like, let it go. Come on, get killed. Yeah, nice. Um, well, anyway, so this Resident Evil Five thing blew up back in the day, mm-hmm. and uh, it's come back up in the news again <coughs> because they they did. Resident Evil 2 and 3 and now and they just recently did Resident Evil 4 remake. Mm-hmm. So they're remaking all these games. And now that 4 is out, 5 is next. And all the articles have come out saying, "Oh, you can't remake 5. 5 needs to be rewritten entirely because it's just too racist. So they just need to get rid of 5 and just do something different. You can't remake it. It's a t- it's a product of its time and it's evil and it's bad, right?" Right. And some interviews came out with with uh, people uh, with the Japanese like team that worked on the game originally, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. like the director of the game was like, "Yeah, we uh, were really surprised about the backlash because we didn't understand what was going on. We were just telling a story that took place in Africa, so right. it, like it just made sense to have it set up this way. Mm-hmm. Nothing else really would make sense, right? Right. And uh, they the damn it, the director was like. Um, we learned that we need to be more sensitive to other cultures and what they find to be problematic. And that is now apparently how some people in Capcom think about game development. They try to think of what the Western audience is going to think about uh, about their games. And so that that kind of this kind of censorship stuff is going to end up in Japanese games and already has in some games. Uh, because they are, they're getting captured by the same ideology, not because they buy into it, but because they are worried that the American market is going to be upset about it. Right. And we've become such a big deal. American, the American market has become such a big deal to Japan that uh, they really care about the American market. It's such a big deal that, uh, like Sony, for example, they moved the PlayStation headquarters to California. Yeah. So, uh, Sony is no longer headquartered, or PlayStation is no longer headquartered in Cal- in uh, Japan. Wow. It's headquartered in California now because they see America as the primary market. So now all of Sony's first-party games are filtered through this American kind of lens. So what? So what's happening here is that Jap- J- Japanese uh, companies that made good games are mm. going to come over here and start making bad games, and then their companies are going to be on the, uh, you know, on the, uh, in the fire, just like, uh, just like American Damn companies it. are. Yes. No, well, that's cool. It seems that way. Seems that way. And the question is, how quickly? Oh, and Sony has been doing a bunch of censorship since 2018, whenever they moved their headquarters to the United mm-hmm. States. Uh, as soon as that happened. They started censoring tons of Japanese games. 
mm. uh, that were coming to the United States. They started saying, oh, yeah, uh, oh, there's cleavage here. you got to get rid of that cleavage. We're not going to publish your game if you have cleavage here. Oh, there's, uh, there's like, uh, you know, nudity in this game. Uh, no, we're not going to allow this game on PlayStation. Uh, what, what this has been going on since 2018. About, like does GTA not still have nudity? And no, no, those are allowed. Japanese games that have nudity because Japanese games have like you know with anime art styles and uh -huh. that have sexy, sexy characters and graphics and stuff. That's the problem, right? Why? Why? Because that because that's just how it is. Because because okay. Japanese games are are for like weirdos, right? Oh, the Japanese yeah, sexy sure. games are for like loser weirdos, mm -hmm. right? Uh, American uh, sexy games are for like you know. Uh, w you know, they're like well-adjusted adults, right? right? So, but the Japanese, that's for weirdos. <laughs> right. So, yeah. The CEO of Sony, uh, of uh, PlayStation, has uh -huh. been, uh, up until this year, a guy named uh, Jim Ryan, I think. He's mm -hmm. an American dude from yeah. the American side of Sony, uh, uh, Sony Computer Entertainment. What are you doing? I want to see what's in that other door there that oh, I missed. Oh, okay. <laughs> I missed that door. Look, I, I want to see it. Uh, it's, it's I think it's just a coin, but I, I want it, though. Okay. There we go. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> I didn't... I wanted to see what it was, okay? <laughs> I didn't care about getting the coin, Jeremy. It's just a fucking coin. <laughs> anyway. Um, well, so Jim Ryan is gone now. He retired this year, and now the CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment is Japanese again. Mm -hmm. But... He's only in the interim CEO. So mm -hmm. the question that is on my mind, I don't know about everybody else, but the question on my mind is, is the Japanese guy the CEO again just for now until they find some new woke American person to become yeah. the CEO? Or is that like a, a, a signaling a shift in the mindset of Sony as it, as it uh, you know, regards it's PlayStation? So wild to me because these American companies are fucking themselves with all the woke nonsense. And the Japanese companies have largely been unaffected, uh -huh. and they're moving over here so that they can be, so that they can be infected with the woke nonsense, right? Yeah. Seems that way. Can't they see that they sell more games <laughs> without the woke I garbage? In them? I don't know, like, man. So, so you say like it's a, it's about like what American culture? Are they just looking at like? media headlines and reading blog posts and going, hmm, this is what America cares about. Because clearly money is not speaking in this example. I don't know. Examples. One of the biggest like breakout hits for a Japanese developed game that you know barely even got to America in recent memory is Near Automata. And Near Automata it's didn't all give about a boobs. It didn't give a shit about about no. censoring its sexy female characters, okay? Mm -hmm. Like that was a big thing in it, and they just they just went for it, and they I, that game. I'm pretty sure that game barely got released in the United States because they didn't think they were gonna they didn't think it was gonna be a big thing. I mean, Near is a spinoff. This is a this is a uh, a uh, ex uh, like six million years in the future <laughs> prequel or a sequel to. A game that's a spinoff from another <laughs> game that, like, three quarters of them have never been released right. in America. So it's like nobody knew that Nier was going to be super successful, but it was super successful. It was an uns it was like a unprecedented success. It yeah. sold a ridiculous number of copies. I can't. I I looked at. I I didn't. I knew it was popular because I knew everybody. Everybody knows what Nier Automata is, look right? Look at the game. You can't help but want to play it. Like, right. It's amazing. It's, it's just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew it was really... It had kind of captured the internet's, you know, attention. Um, but I saw something about the actual sales numbers a while back that sh it kind of blew me away how many copies it actually sold. Let's see if I can find it. Eight million units. Okay. Eight million. That is crazy for that game. That's a sequel to a right. game that basically nobody played. Right. Okay. Near. Nobody played Near. A few people know about Near. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nobody played it, and it's a series of games that has never sold more than maybe like a few hundred thousand right. on all the platforms it's been on, and that game sold eight million units. That's yeah. crazy. Yep. 
that's a huge success for a Japanese developed game that really is not developed for the US market at all. Right. And that's a perfect signal that you would think they would be reading to say, oh, you know what? Maybe the American market doesn't need to be catered to specifically. Right. Maybe we can just make the stuff we make and well, they'll like it. But isn't it pretty apparent? <laughs> nice. Isn't it pretty apparent now that America loves Japan and we love things having to do with Japan? I like, would it, think like, so. Isn't it becoming more and more I mean, prevalent that anime, anime and, manga I mean, is huge over here? Well, m maybe maybe they need to take a step back and say we don't need to cater to the American market. We need to just keep sending our shit over here because they love it already. Yeah, like, we we want that we want the Japanese uh, content. Right. We like it specifically. Yes. I do. I dude, I love Japanese games. Does it does it not make sense? Like is it not just common sense to say that <laughs> that that maybe some of the reason that we love Japanese games is because they're not woke garbage and that maybe you know putting a focus on the American market is going to be negative for them? Yeah, I mean, you would you would think. I, look, the thing I, the thing I love about Japanese games is that they they tend to be so like odd mm -hmm. <laughs> and quirky and and just they don't align with what your kind of normal conventions and, are and in I like games. The, you know the th the philosophy in a lot of yeah Japanese product, you know, anime games whatever like yes the story the message the yes. philosophy it's all well they good tend to stuff, you know? they tend to not have um they tend to not have political messaging in them right. that is like it's more relatable about spiritual and life stuff right it's uh it's more of a uh philosophical yeah. exercise than it is uh political which yeah. is part of what is appealing about it right Near Automata is a uh, an existential, you know, nightmare, uh -huh. <laughs> and it's and it's great, you know. Yeah, and it's got a, it's got an awesome fishing mini game. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I love the fishing. Completely mini -game. stupid. <laughs> I love it so much, but dude, that breaks the game in half. Uh huh. Money, money Damn is it. just money is just a joke in that game. Yeah. And money is a suggestion. You know, you look at those high priced chips and stuff, and you're like, I'd like to have that. And you go fish for five minutes and sell your fish. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're good to go. Yeah. Another game series that I absolutely adore, that is totally just 100% through and through a Japanese game series that, that is made with no consideration for the West at all, mm -hmm. is Yakuza. I fucking yeah. love those games. And they are one. They are just pure Japanese, okay? Right. They have no no fucks given towards the the West right. when they were developed, and those games are one they're delightful. Mm -hmm. They're just a, they're just a delight, man. Yeah, they're so like off the wall and quirky and weird and written in ways that just you would never see yeah. if it was developed by a Western company. Yeah, I I I like. I like consuming content from other places, other cultures that think differently than us, right. because it's interesting to see how, like, what they produce. Mm -hmm. Their different culture produces different media, right. and it's interesting to see how those differences manifest. Mm -hmm. So, for them to homogenize their media around our culture, yeah. that's like the worst idea ever. Yeah. It completely defeats the purpose right. of watching their media. I'm with you, man. I, I think that they're making a big mistake if they if they cater to the American market when we already love. They that's the that's just what drives me crazy. Like the reason that the American market matters to them is because we love them. Yes, they that's made the stuff. reason why we love we love them because we love them. You know, and right? We, we buy their stuff because we like their stuff. Like, don't make stuff that's like what we have. Keep making what you have and sending it over here because we love it. Clearly, a mistake has been made here. How uh, did we not get the wonder seed, wonder flower? That's a, a hang on. That is yeah. That's a checkpoint right before the end of the level. So there it is. <laughs> okay. Yep. Oh boy. 
All right, you know what? I do like the Jello Mario, but they could they could be overusing it <laughs> using it here. Nah, this is awesome. I want to be Jello Mario all day long. Um. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're totally right. The thing that made them a thing, the thing that built their market here, is the fact that they are that they made the the product that we wanted to consume here, right. and that built the market in America for them. Capcom, Capcom. I mean, hell, this, man, part of the reason we go to other cultures looking for media is because we don't love the media that we have here. <laughs> well, it's not it's not that. It's that we we. Um, we want to experience something different. Sure, sure. We want to experience something different. It's not just that, you know, we don't love the media that we have here, because I do love a lot of Western media. It's been pretty shit lately, but mm -hmm. there's some fantastic stuff out there, and always has been, you know. Um, but it is, it's wonderful to be able to go and see something from a totally different perspective, from a different culture. Mm -hmm. And, uh... I like. Why would you want to tailor your stuff to what our culture right. um, expects? Because it's it's we when we go seeking your stuff, we're going there to see your stuff, right. not our stuff. Yeah, we've got our stuff here. It sucks. <laughs> yep. Well, um, that, that I just wonder what the what the real reason for the massive. Uh, uptick in interest in Japanese media has been in the past several years. Well, I think it's because I mean, you go you I go think back it, to the '90s and like Dragon Ball Z on Toonami was like whoa, like wow, you know, never seen anything like this before. Mm -hmm. And that's only been 30 years ago, and now everybody, everybody knows anime, everybody knows Japanese video games. You know, things that used to be nerdy are now mainstream. Yeah. Well, I do think that a part of it definitely is that the stuff that we've been getting in, here in the West has not been great for a while. And I think people are looking for something good, and there's a lot of good shit out there that's uh, that's made in Japan. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's a big factor. Um I mean, you know, old, uh, old, old Gary, old Gary, you know Gary. Yeah. <clears throat> Gary's always saying, Nerd Roddick is always saying that the uh, the manga manga is just killing comic books. Yeah. In terms of sales and stuff, because because comic because books, comic books become, suck because they successful. become like preachy, just yeah. preachy bullshit that nobody wants to see. They want to see you know heroic characters do cool shit. I mean, and they want to be inspired. And there is love. A, I do love Snowflake and Safe Space. That that well, that, that is a good one. That was heroic. That's heroic <laughs> characters doing uh, doing noble and heroic things. Yeah. If I've ever seen <laughs> seen that. Um, that never came out, by the way. Did it not? No, it did <laughs> what not. a surprise. It got canceled. <laughs> it got canceled what a before shock. it came out. I can't believe it. I know. It's crazy. But uh, I never would have expected that it wouldn't come out, you know? <laughs> Seems like the kind of thing that... Oh, damn it, I didn't get that yeah, one I was going to say, what, what secret was up there? Yep. <laughs> Probably something really important and magical. Um, and but now, now you're trapped. Can I get Slime Mario back, please? I like this infinite wall jump you got going here. Damn. Okay, I know what to do. Go out that exit over there. But before I do that, no, there's no way. Uh, you don't have bubble, do you? Uh, you no, I don't. I have drill. Oh, does drill work here? Um, oh, maybe. On the... Yeah. It does. Sweet. Oh, oh only it. the bottom, though. Hold on. Ooh, it turns, though. I wonder if it'll turn you around to the top. Or you have to stay on the bottom. I think it'll auto... Yeah, it auto dumps me if I... I really like just the visual here. I like this a lot. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna make it to the top, bro. You can't stop me. <laughs> What's up here? Boundary break? Am I boundary breaking <laughs> right now? I might be... What kind of super secrets might be up here? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, it was Amazing. nothing. That's what it was. Hold on. Oh, wait. No, I know how to do I know what to do here. Here. Check it out, Behan. This is going to be... Damn it. <laughs> this is going to be worth it. Because 
what you have to remember is that I only have to worry about being rock man for there I can stand on top of this yeah, thing yeah right right and now I can jump into wait the ceiling wait for it wait for it yeah I'm in the ceiling bitch nice I now, bet you're one of s several people who have ever done that is there anything up here doesn't seem like it <laughs> <laughs> well look it was worth it okay because now I know that there's nothing up there yeah That's too bad. I was really hoping for something to be up there. I'm going to hit the restroom before you pass it over to me. All right. You can start oh, the shit. next stage if you'd like. I've made a horrible mistake. Um, well, this sucks. Oh, nice. Ah, damn it. <laughs> Didn't work. Okay, what do we have here? Ah, oh, sweet. My favorite. You'll never guess what I am on the next level. Is this another level with the same thing? <laughs> yep. I'm wow. Jello Mario. Wow. Now this was just one of those like short like uh, oh, uh not break times but something like that, yeah. Challenge. Know. Something like that. Yata. That just wasn't even translated at all. What? They said yata. Oh. Well, maybe that's a uh, poplin for something. No, that's Japanese for you did it. Maybe that's poplin for fuck you. Wait. We. Wait. What? That's what oh. you get in the castle when you beat the st the world. <laughs> oh, that's weird. This is like a little like not even a thing thing this has got to be a this is a fake out these these poplins are fake they're fake they're the boss oh okay or something they're here to kill us no. uh -huh. okay they're here to steal our money <laughs> this is a fake out there's no way There's not a castle? And we found all the wonder seeds in the fungi mines. So we 100% completed it without trying. I don't know. This level seems like bullshit to me. <laughs> I don't even. So what was that level? You just walked in and got the royal seed. And I walked it? in and immediately there was a, a wonder, wonder seed. So flower? I, I or wonder flower. So I got it and then I did the little bullshit, not, not even a challenge at all thing as Jello Mario, and then it gave me the royal seed. I feel like we got ripped off. I feel like maybe that level was the last one in development, and uh -huh. they ran out of time. Ran out of time and they're like, "Well, <laughs> fuck it. Let's just." That world was like, "Yeah, it's fine." Yeah. So. 
so this is the end of the game, eh? I guess. Wow. Fungi. Oh, wait. There's still another world that we haven't been to, isn't there? Well, maybe Bowser Castle is going to shit it out here. Shit out an extra world. Anything like what? He looks like he just gave us a flower to get to him. I wasn't expecting him to give us the flower, the p propeller flower to get to him. Okay, I've got a question for you, Jeremy. Whenever we defeat Bowser here, uh -huh. do you think that the world map will invert upside down? And <laughs> we then we'll have, have to, to play, play every level the, upside yeah. down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, so you know, I was telling you about Dracula X uh, Nocturne in the Moonlight yeah. uh, on Sega Saturn. Mm -hmm. Well, I played a little bit of it. You know, it's uh, like it's like uh, Castle. It's like Symphony of the Night. Yeah, it is yeah. the same game. It's like it. It's a lot like it. <laughs> um, but there is there's one two, thing that's kind of odd about it. World, there's two extra zones that you can go to. There's one thing that's kind of odd about it is that you have a third hand that you can put stuff in. Really? Yeah. You got an extra Why hand. Do you have an extra hand. <laughs> well, I don't know, but in the <laughs> menu, but in the menu, there's a third hand. So right hand, left hand, and it's like extra hand or whatever. It says like I think it says like extra. Wow. But it's a hand. So if you can and you use can equip three something to weapons? it. Uh, I don't know because I haven't gotten far enough to really confirm that. But you can equip stuff to it. Like I could equip a chicken to it. Okay, alright. Um, but I'm not really sure how it works yet, because I haven't messed with it very I mean, that, much. I played for look, like 15 minutes. Honestly, that's a quality of life upgrade that I'm for, because mm -hmm. you can dual wield weapons, mm -hmm. but in order to heal yourself, you have to equip into your hand a yeah. potion, and then go back to the game, throw the potion on the ground, pick it up, and then I get switch why, back to the... I get why they did that did it that way mm -hmm. which is that it gives you the ability if you keep a potion equipped to toss a potion out without having to go into the right. menu and you can just get it right away but i think it's a bad design mm -hmm. i think you should be able to just use the potion in the menu and not have to deal with the equipping right. and all that bullshit but this third hand i'm assuming is for like healing and status effect items and stuff like that not for weapons i i don't know for sure because i haven't really experimented with it much I'm just. But, can you not jump on these? Oh, you can. I was yeah, just you were just doing uh, it wrong every time. I guess. hitting the hitbox just wrong there, taking a lot of damage. You were taking massive damage. Oh, I like this. So it's like a bullet build, but instead of them dropping immediately when you when you jump on them, they slowly they slowly fall. Yeah, know? they're missile bills. Yeah, missile megs. Oh. You know that woke garbage. You're right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like it. I think it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Bowser said something about missile megs. I see. Well, that must be these. They should be missile mels. Yeah? Because that sounds more like Bill? Well, because it sounds more like a man. Oh. Sounds like a male name. <laughs> okay. Like Mel Gibson. Yeah. Except for male, Mel Misselman. Uh-huh. Man, <laughs> man, Mel Gibson's name should be Mel Gibsman. <laughs> Gibsman? <laughs> yeah. Why? Just because I thought of it just now. <laughs> okay. I thought it would be funny. <laughs> man, whatever happened to Mel Gibson? He just got canceled. Before cancel culture, he got canceled. No, well... Mel Gibson got canceled, and then he did some other stuff, and then he just, like, retired, I think. Yeah. I think that's actually what happened. He, there was a post-cancellation period for Mel Gibson where he made some more movies, but yeah. then I think he just, Dang, like, quit. I did the same thing again. Wait. I think there was a missile Mel, that, <laughs> yeah. that one that was falling. I think yeah. it was still down there. 
Um, there you go. <laughs> thanks, bro. <laughs> All right. Uh, who was I thinking about the? I was thinking of somebody the other day who just kind of disappeared. Who was it? Oh, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Heath Ledger's twin. Um, George, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. What's he done lately? A uh, whole lot of nothing, as far as I know. I love that guy. I want to see him and stuff. Yep. You know who else has fallen off of the face of the earth? Steve Buscemi. Yeah. Where's that guy? I love Steve Buscemi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's, you know. Why isn't he's he Steve making Buscemi. movies anymore? I don't know. <laughs> Steve, because, I mean, he's. Because he's, he's always a supporting actor in whatever movie he's, he's in. He's only ever the same character in every movie yeah, he's in. Yeah, but I in. like him. I guess nobody's had a call for a Steve Buscemi in their movie. <laughs> Lately. Well, he used to be in a lot of Coen Brothers films. Yeah. And he used to be in a lot of uh, Adam Sandler films. Tarantino films <laughs> and Sandler films. Yeah. And I don't think Adam Sandler has made very many movies lately. Yeah, I don't he's on think... the Netflix train. He's got a bunch of um, Netflix shit. Quentin Tarantino definitely ha doesn't make very many movies. Yeah, That's a rare general, occurrence. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, the Coen Brothers are no longer making movies together. So yeah. they have... Neither are the Wachowski brothers. The Cohen brothers uh, are individually working on projects, but they're no longer working together. Yeah. Which is a uh, real shame. I, it's crazy. The Cohen brothers have made so many phenomenal <laughs> movies, and they just like they've made them all together, and then yeah. all of a sudden they're not working together anymore. Know, maybe they just didn't like each other much. I mean, they brothers, made like right? they made like, but they made movies for like. 35 years together. Yeah. And now they're just like yeah. I don't know if we'll make another movie together. You know, the but, movie production is, it's kind of tough and stressful. And, you know, I just want to do it by myself. <laughs> right. It's tough and stressful. So, you know, I don't want any help anymore. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. Like, uh, they were just, they were movie making machines, dude. They were churning out movies. Hold on. Let me die real quick before I get to the, uh... there we go. Nice. All right. Yeah, I mean, they were churning out movies, like, they were churning out a movie every every year and a half to two years. I right. mean, they were just a machine, right? Mm -hmm. And then just all of a sudden, around 2015, I think, they just, like, stopped making movies. Mm -hmm. And now, like, Joel Cohen, I think, has made a couple of movies, and I think Ethan Cohen has made a couple of movies by themselves, but that's, or, like, a documentary, I think. Right. Uh, a documentary and maybe a movie. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't know, it's crazy. The Coens. I miss them already. I miss them, Jeremy. Yeah. Their movies are just like top tier, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't, how, how do you feel about Coen Brothers movies? Um, remind me. Coen uh, Brothers films. Raising Arizona. Never seen it. Oh, okay. Um, uh, no Country for Old Men. Uh, depressing? Yeah, hell yeah. That movie's fantastic, though. Yeah? It's uh, one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, I should watch it again. It's been um, a Miller's Crossing. Never seen it. That movie's awesome. It's a, it's a, um, uh, it's a gangster, like, you know, 1920s, 1930s era gangster movie. Yeah. It's great. Fantastic. Um, Burn After Reading. I've uh, seen it. Burn After Reading's fucking hilarious, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's goofy. I mean, I, I love any movie that Brad Pitt's in, to be honest. So. Uh, well, I don't, I, I, no, I wouldn't say that I love any movie that Brad Pitt's in, but I love Brad Pitt. Fargo? You know, I heard something about Fargo earlier today. Um, Have you I, never seen Fargo? I've never seen Fargo. Wow, Fargo's great. Yeah, so that's the thing about Coen Brothers movies is that I haven't seen any of them. That's so, so weird. Dad loved Coen Brothers movies. I, I would have thought that you guys would have you know no. seen some coen brothers movies uh let's see what are some other coen brothers movies i i know more of them because i've seen all of them uh the man with no name no uh barton fink no uh blood simple no yeah no, i know you wouldn't have seen blood simple <laughs> blood simple is my favorite coen yeah. brothers movie actually um why wouldn't i well, have seen it well okay 
It's not my favorite, but it's one of my. It's like top two, I think. Going, I think I might. I think No Country for Old Men is probably my favorite. Yeah. Obvious, obvious choice. But um, I think Blood Simple is my second favorite. It's really. It's their first movie. Okay. So the reason you wouldn't have seen it is because it's their first movie. Mm-hmm. They were kind of unknowns at the time. Yeah. And uh, they didn't really take off until Raising Arizona. I think that was their first like real success. Okay. But to me, Blood Simple is like such a raw distillation of what all Coen Brothers movies really are, mm-hmm. which is the uh, ever increasing chaos because people misunderstand situations like if you, it starts out with somebody who's maybe well-meaning right yeah and then there's a series of misunderstandings that lead to escalating chaos that at the end of the movie it's just like all hell has broken loose everything has gone wrong because yeah. of a series of just mistakes and misunderstandings that were like totally reasonable each individual one of them is a reasonable misunderstanding right but it culminates in just absolute chaos okay uh, and I love their movies because of that. It's 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 they're just they're typically very funny even whenever they're dark. Yeah. Um, and uh, Blood Simple is a dark movie, but it's it has but it is also funny. Yeah. At times, and it it's a, it's like the it's like a really rough early iteration of like what they really perfected later and i okay. like it it's got a raw quality to it yeah that uh that really it's it's uh it's got some really it does a good job of contrast well all coen brothers movies do a good job of contrasting like like really brutal like truly like horrible things with comedy yeah and uh i think blood simple does a fantastic job of just being extremely brutal yeah uh, but then also funny, and then also the entire concept of what has happened is based on just like stupid misunderstandings by stupid people. Right. It's great. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 oh, the classic, Jeremy. The classic. Um, uh, but I'm blinking on the name of it right now. Coen Brothers movie is. Uh... Shit! What the fuck is that movie called? It's the classic one. It's the classic. The Big Lebowski. That's oh, the, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I knew so that. is that the only Obviously. Coen Brothers movie you've seen? No, I've seen Burn After Reading, and I've oh, seen, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I've seen and then No Country no for Country Old Men. No Country for Old Men, yeah. yeah. Uh, Inside Lou and Davis. No. That one's so... Eh, I didn't love it. Um, uh, the Lady Killers. That movie's shit, dude. That Does Tom ass. Hanks? Yes. That movie sucks ass. That's yeah. their worst movie by I remember, far. I think I worked at the theater when that came out. You probably did. That movie sucks. That yeah. is their worst movie by far. It's like by a mile. Yeah. It's so bad. <laughs> uh, uh, let me see. I bet you could do um, another one. Yeah. Let's see. These seem to be going by in about three or four minutes. So. Mm. Evade the Seeker Bullet Bills. Hmm. Can I manage that? Maybe. Wait. Missile Meg got her own name, but but these things are just Seeker Bullet Bills? Apparently so. They're completely different. Yeah, they don't even look remotely no. like a bullet bill. Oh, nice. They hit each other. Sweet. <laughs> Yeah. This Meg should have just been called Long Bullet Bill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> nice. I mean, there's Torpedo Ted from from uh, that one level in Super Mario World. These guys should be like Seeker Sam. Seeker Sam. Yeah. Well, there's Bob Bombs. Yeah. You know? Bob Bomb. They're not Bill. Bill. They're not Bill variants. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the all the weapons have their own specific name. The big one is Bonsai Bill. Yeah. I mean, he has... He shares a name with Bullet Bill, I guess, but, you know, he's a different guy. Why can't these be... Uh, <coughs> damn it. <laughs> Why can't these be homing... 
homing heralds. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Homing homers. <laughs> well, that's a little too on the nose, Jeremy. I like Harold because it's yeah. a... Damn it. <laughs> I like Harold because it's a... I think Harold's a funny name in the first yeah. place, okay? Always have. Yeah, Harold is, is the standard old guy name. Harold and Mar Marge? Yeah, Marge Madge, and Harold. Marge? Marge and Harold, yeah. Marge and Harold. Oh, Harold <laughs> always handled the finances. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know how to do anything without Harold. He mm. also handled the iPhone. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, man. Don't you hate it whenever somebody's like, Oh, I don't mess with the phone. My husband does that. Then he gets home and he's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I have no idea how to work. You know, work it was this that day that I told you the worst thing about this job and, you know, possibly the reason I will end up quitting, like, randomly one day is uh -huh. these old people who are like, yeah, I couldn't give a fuck about technology. Now oh, show yeah, yeah, me yeah. how to use my phone. Yeah, I don't, so I, can, I don't keep up with technology. Right. Oh, okay. So you are, uh, so you're the problem here. Right. Um, that, now I that expect you to solve this for me. Literally happened almost word for word exactly how I explained it the next day. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was like, I was sitting there, I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me that uh. this is happening right now, after I just like I over, you know, I. I I was being over embellishing, yeah. you know, the way that I was Because you were thinking, oh, well, look, yeah. statistically, what are the odds that if I talk yeah. about this in an over embellished way that it'll happen it to me? It literally happened. <laughs> like, the lady was like, I couldn't give two rats asses about uh -huh. uh, iPhones and technology. I'd take notes on paper, and I, I don't like all the. What just happened? I think there? that's a speed block that you touched. <laughs> okay. I just didn't go for it. <laughs> Uh, anyway, no, I think a physics fuck up yeah, happened I think actually. So too. But it it was she was just like I don't care anything about all this, and then you know demanded like four cameras and uh -huh. uh, and for me to show her how to use her phone before or yeah. no 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 oh no it was even worse than that it was. I, I'm glad that I have people like you and my son in my life to do all this stuff for me. And I was like, well, I would prefer not to be the one to have to do this yeah. for you, you know. Well, I've got great news. Uh, I'm not going to be helping you <laughs> right. in the future, okay? Don't call me. <laughs> oh. No, it's it was... I, I was getting like visibly frustrated with this woman after she said i'm glad i there's people like you and my son that i can always count on to do this stuff for me uh -huh. i was like you, yeah because that's what that's what i want to spend my time doing not my job but right teaching you do or not teaching you just taking your phone and doing it for you right oh well that's Oh. That's a bummer. I really don't care about the flagpole. I missed the freaking wonder seat again. It's fine. I'm getting the fuck out of here. We'll do this next time. Oh man! <laughs> I couldn't even get the wonderful, <laughs> Jeremy. Come yeah. on. At All least right. life and limb to get back up on top of that staircase. Well... What do you think? You think next week we'll be finishing it yeah, off? Yeah, this will be is finale the and then game or was this like a fake out? I don't know. I think we'll finish it up in the first hour and we can switch over to the next game. Is it going to be Pikmin? Yeah, we can do Pikmin. Pikmin on GameCube? Uh, I did a little reading on Pikmin. I was, I maybe might have misunderestimated uh -huh. how, how long, long it's it takes. Take. Um, it is fixed the time periods are fixed. You can beat the time period. You can do it faster than the time period for the day-night cycles. Mm -hmm. But it's basically, I think you're locked into a timer for each day. Mm -hmm. But the number of days that it takes for you to beat the game, you can influence that by how efficiently you do it. Oh, okay. Uh, there is a hard out though there is a right. maximum amount of time where you just lose the game if you right. haven't beaten it by then um, uh, i it's like eight hours i think it's isn't it uh 
like a life or death scenario. Like yeah. you're gonna die if you yes. don't get your thing done. Yeah, yeah you die. Yeah. So, um, so it. Uh, I think it's like eight hours if you take the full number of days mm-hmm. to do it. If you go through the entire uh, day cycle for the entire list of days it gives yeah. you. Um, but if you beat it early by playing more efficiently, I think you can get it done like six. So mm. it's probably going to be three or four streams. For okay, us. that's fine. I mean, this. I was thinking like it was going to be eight. like two because I was thinking it's like four hours to right. beat it. But okay. Well, we yeah we could start that next week after we finish this and then and then however long it takes. Sweet. All right, I'm gonna save our game and we'll catch you guys next week. Later. <laughs>